Scott, uh, many of the new products you're developing involve smart beta. Why should advisors care about smart beta and what can it do for them? Yeah, people love to talk about smart beta, alternative beta, advanced beta, strategic beta. Everybody's got a new name for it. Um, but it's been a concept that uh, driven around investment research that's been important in the ETF business for, for nearly 10 years. And so it's something that uh, I think more investors are, are starting to look at as and we think about it, the most important ones and the ones where advisors are, are they're starting to really resonate with advisors are advanced beta or smart beta strategies that are focused around an outcome that an advisor needs to achieve. So you think about some of the most successful areas have been around dividend strategies where there's an outcome for a client that they're looking to achieve, uh, low volatility strategies. And more recently, many of the products that we've launched within our Spider ETF business around a series of MSCI quality mix products, which are a multi-factor approach. Our thought process around that was the most important factors that we could think of that would achieve a multi-factor uh, result for a client were around ones that combined volatility, low volatility, valuation, um, and quality as key components. Not because the individual factors were of importance, but what was the end outcome that an investor was looking for. So I think that we're going to continue to see advisors look at advanced beta products, try to understand where does it fit. Is it isolating a single factor to help you isolate that factor? Is it helping you achieve an end result for a client like a dividend uh, strategy? Or is it helping you to achieve an overall portfolio risk and return construct like you might see in some of the multi-factor approaches? So let's say it's for income or dividend income. When an advisor will go to his or her client and say, OK, we're trying to achieve income for you in retirement, let's say. So we're investing in this ETF. Uh, do they have to understand what's going on under the hood? How important is it to actually understand what's going on there and even explaining smart beta? Does, is that irrelevant, to, do you think, to the client? I think the client conversation is more about what the product, what the role of that product is going to be in that client's portfolio. And that's, that's the truth, whether or not you're talking about a dividend product where you might be looking at choices you have between uh, selecting high yield products versus higher quality yielding products versus yield growth products, which uh, we have a lot to choose from in the market. Uh, so I think it's not necessarily about each individual product, but more about what is the role of this product in the overall portfolio. And I think that it makes very good sense for many of our advisors who use ETFs to be doing combinations of traditional, uh, traditional uh, beta exposure ETFs that are kind of core, al core parts of their allocation, and to also be expanding to look at uh, when does an advanced beta or a factor beta or a smart beta uh, product fit better in that particular part of the client's portfolio? And what do you call it at SSGA? At SSGA, we've, we've, we've centered in around advanced beta. So if you see me trap, uh, uh, trap into that, uh, sip, slip back into that wording, uh, that's why. Um, because at the end of the day, uh, we think advanced beta captures the broader net of uh, indices that are designed to capture a strategy. Uh, versus indices that are designed to isolate a factor, versus indices that are designed to isolate um, uh, some form of uh, segment of the market or replicate a strategy that people are using. 